welcome to Organic Edible Garden. As the moon is now in the first quarter, it's a really good time to plant your peas, which should be ready by Christmas. And we're also going to look at our tomato seedlings, which we planted about five weeks ago. The first thing we're going to do is make a strong frame for our peas. Today we're going to use untreated hardwood stakes, or you can invest in metal waratahs, which will last you years and years. It's important that you construct your frames before you plant your peas. The more stakes you use, the stronger the frame will be. We're using a garden twine rather than a soft string this time. It's a little bit stronger and it'll be easier for the peas to climb onto. Then we're going to wind this around the sticks for the peas to climb up. We're using a jute that when the peas are finished at the end of the season, you can throw it all in the compost bin and this will also rot away. There are two important things to remember when planting peas and beans. The first is drainage. Here we're in a raised bed, so we've generally got the problem solved. If you don't have that, putting it into a mound and planting your peas and beans on top of that mound is always a good way. The second most important thing is the alkalinity of the soil. Both peas and beans love alkaline soils, so a good dressing of garden lime every time you plant them is a good idea. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to plant our sugar snap peas. In this case we've got some pre-grown ones which will start off first and then in between them we're going to plant some sugar snap seeds. This way we'll get an earlier crop before Christmas and these will come up between them and these will be ready at Christmas time. This applies to all types of peas but I prefer the sugar snaps because you can use some immature snow peas, you can use them as shallot peas when they get too big or you can eat them pod and peas and all when they're ready. It doesn't matter that it's too close together, they're happy growing that way. Now that we've planted our peas, we're going to add a few seeds around them. This will give us a longer crop. We've put some seeds in about five centimetres apart. Now we're going to push them in to about the depth of the thumbnail. To be successful, the next two important things we need to do is help them trail up the teepee and protect them from slugs and snails. Remember five weeks ago we planted the seed tray. These little guys have been sitting on the front deck and are now ready to be transplanted. The important thing with these is make sure the seed tray dries out before we do our transplant. We're going to transplant our tomatoes into pots. And remember it's best just one tomato per container. So we'll fill a few of our pots up with a good potting mix. When separating the tomatoes, it's best to use a knife or a sharp object. Because the seed trays are dry, the soil falls easily off the roots.
Unlike other seedlings, the tomato seedlings like to be planted deep in the soil. And don't forget to write a label of what tomato it is. We haven't written the date on these labels. We can see as they grow. The reason we've done in the seed tray to make sure that all of our seeds were viable. Now that we've pricked out our seedlings, they've come out of a dry seed tray, so it's really important we give them a good water. We're gonna put this container in a warm shelter position. And when they're roughly about this size, they're ready to plant out in the garden. For us, we're gonna plant ours out at Labor Weekend, but it depends on your climate. If you wanna put your tomatoes in earlier, there are three important points to remember. First, put the stake in the ground before you plant your tomato. Secondly, give them a good dosage of calcium. And finally, plant them deeper than they are in the pot. In this case, I'd plant my tomato at least this deep in the ground. This area below will all turn into roots and will make it a much stronger tomato. Mm -hmm.